Hello, this is Nano. I'm doing this deck profile for Jeans and Tonic. I chose to profile a Gravekeeper deck because I think it's not a very explored uh, archetype yet, and uh, I'm taking a slightly different approach to what you would be used to see for a Gravekeeper's deck, which I think is a nice way to take advantage of the best cards the deck has access to, which is in this case Royal Tribute, and I would otherwise think it would be a cut of Loman if we are not playing a Royal Tribute because these are the cards with the strongest effect that you gain access to if you play Grave Keepers but wouldn't have access to otherwise. Uh, Royal Tribute is particularly well positioned at the moment with all the Chaos decks playing uh, uh, 20 to 23 monsters and it's also supported by a strong bounce engine so that we can Royal Tribute for a plus one or plus two very easily turning into basically a uh, tree of additional Trinity card. And so the deck is going to be mostly about gaining the most advantage out of Royal Tribute and support our strategy to make it as consistent as possible. We're going so we need a very low monster count. I only have 12 with one serpent, which we don't mind uh, discarding. And it's three Gravekeeper Spy, which is the best Gravekeeper monster. Just one Spear Soldier and one Ascendant, because these are the weakest monsters uh, on their own. So whenever they people will answer Necro Valley quite often and will need, uh, need either to play without uh, in a simplified game state or stick at least one turn without it and uh, we want the least possible drawback when this happens. Um, Ascendant and Spear Soldier are both cards that are horrible to draw without a Necro Valley since they're worse than any average monster in the format and they're fine, they're nice options to have an additional spy toolbox but we don't want multiples, we don't want to turn into a vanilla bit down deck and they're going to kill goats, going to kill a bunch of beaters and be nice search options but our main strategy is going to be revolve around just using spy and their tree of grave keepers guard which is much more solid on its own, it plays better with uh, or the rest of our strategy as we have Compulse Book to enforce the bounce and repeat it through multiple turns so that we may just kill an opponent with uh, taking off their normal summons and obviously because of a royal tribute to turn these effects into actual card advantage also it has very strong stra stats meaning that we can match up well against uh, warriors regardless of them breaking our uh, multiple cards setup and just play well through aggression and reduce opposing options so if we get ahead, ahead on the board this way it's going to be extremely hard to beat us and it's also a great way to recover board advantage if we can just uh, stay one or two turns uh, middle way. So uh, guard is our, uh, going to be our main monster at Side Spy and then we're rounding it up with uh, Sengon which is staple, Morphin Jar which is in my opinion staple whenever we have a lower monster count than average in the format because we can force card advantage on Morphin Jar whenever we want, well, regardless of our opponent reading it or not. And also we play stuff like Jar of Greed, Compulse, Solemn, all of them make Jar better. We have a wide range of flips so that it's harder to read. And we can use our bounce card like Compulse or Guard to ensure um, we make our opponents and count Iger uh, to make a Jar card advantage play and sort of an extra royal tribute monster. And I, of course, it's not going to be great to flip a morphing after a royal tribute, but you can. But it's uh, the opposite is also true because it will make your second and third royal tributes live mid game uh, without the need to do some massive bouncing. So you can just mid game with both players at a low end count. You can just flip jar and then use tribute for some extra advantage. And then we have Tsukuyami because we. This way we have a Sengan target to kill Thousand S Restrict and round up or out well and also Tsuku Loops with Guard and Spy are going to be great inside this deck. Uh, and it kills a bunch of monsters we may have trouble with as well like random beaters. So it's a nice card to have access to and Serpent we don't mind discarding it with Tribute, it interacts with our Trinity, opposing Trinity and it's a bait set which I consider crucial in this deck, uh, also it stalls, so it's just too good not to play. Um, I think the deck would be much, any deck that can support Serpent would be much worse without it, be it zombies with creature swap or whatever, uh, or 
Crypt Keepers, you don't need Metamorphosis or additional discard cards for Serpent to be better than most of the monsters you can play in the format because it's just adding a different dimension uh, of effect. Uh, it's just completely different from anything and it's very rarely a bad card to have. Uh, so that's it for the monsters, then we have 3 Book of Moon as a staple because uh, rest rate and or big flip effects, reusing guard, reusing spies, but crucial it's just a staple card in Grave Keepers, duo charity. We have 3 Necro Valley, 3 Terraforming because of consistency, we want this uh, Necro early as possible, we that's about it. Uh, 3 Royal Tribute of course, Pot of Greed and 2 Nobleman of course, and we play 2 Upstart Goblin for consistency and also because this way we can use Royal Tribute and then flip or draw cards so that we're not forced to have Solemn Judgment not to die to uh, uh, Eevee Storm, we can just use a Set or Draw power and flip it afterwards uh, Royal Tribute so that opponent gets less information and that we can uh, uh, not be exposed to too much stuff and also this way we get our combos uh, of like Terraf or of like Necro Valley plus Tribute or, tri or a Trinity or a Spy setup with uh, or uh, support cards easier. Um, uh, this is mm, not a combo deck but this deck works uh, is based on multiple cards synergies so having this uh, additional draw power with upstairs and also a triple draw grid is going to be very helpful to make our strategy work. Uh, so this is it, 19 spells and then we have our trap line up, uh, very streamlined with a 3 compulsory, 3 draw of grid, 3 solemn judgment, solemn is obviously a staple in this kind of deck. Compulse is also what I consider a staple for a Gravekeeper's deck like this because it is protecting our cards from Nobleman which is important since we play so few monsters which means we really want to protect them so it's not just Nobleman but any interaction also we get very um, it's very hard to get damage through us once we start flipping a monster or ensure a little bit presence so we can just bounce a flip in response to any interaction card and gain a lot of value then it's another to rest it which we need as well and of course it is going to bounce cards for royal tribute to work and we can uh, ensure a sequence of bounce cards with uh, guard book compuls to create uh, a window of uh, two or three turns in which we can uh, uh, attack our opponents freely and uh, just kill them the Angel of Greed, as I already mentioned, is uh, for consistency and uh, the fact we want to set multiple cards so that it's additional protection from Eevee Storm. Um, that's about it for the main deck. It's uh, meant to do its thing consistently and do it well. And I think it's a very solid strategy for the current uh, God Format environment. I would think uh, the things it matches up very bad against are floodgates cards like level limiter B or gravity bind. Uh, Royal decree is not horrible because all of our traps are chainable and we don't have a huge trap lineup, but obviously we will want additional uh, hit against decree for game two. And we don't have a great matchup against decks that go w uh, on a wide board. Uh, very fast and not a uh, skip gods we don't care about but like a uh, reasoning gate turbo deck uh, we may just be drawing that to them getting some type of bird early game and also tranades are not uh, the best thing we really don't like playing against giant tranade decks eating their combo obviously royal tribute is going to help against those combo stacks but if they are very spell based that's not amazing so our sideboard is going to try to cover those continuous cards and uh, monster spam decks and as well as getting a little uh, additional help against aggro decks since we play uh, we since multiple of uh, necrovali and terraforming may get stuck against aggro and royal tribute may is nice i usually keep it at least a pair going first but maybe cut against aggro decks who tend to play a low monster count and reinforcements of the army and uh, set a lot of cards Nobleman of course set with compulse being decent but not great so we're going to have torrent mirror tribe snatch as the best cards against aggro but also as a nice insurance against any player getting exposing himself to punishment you just spot the player tendencies and yeah, that's big advantage against anyone not playing 
uh, not play, exposing himself to these cards. And then we have a lot of spell and trap removal. Then a nice thing we gain access to is stuff like Kiron and uh, Cursed Seal of Forbidden Spell because of our huge, huge spell lineup with the uh, cards which might be get redundant. So Cursed Seal is, seal is perfect against uh, any combo deck and uh, giant tornade decks. Uh, it might be worth as a trade off. Uh, yeah, it's just too off at the moment uh, because we also have Solemn, but that may as well be worth increase. And then Triple Kiron as well uh, because of the floodgates and uh, decrease or whatever. So we have Tree Kiron along with Breaker, uh, Easter Man, and Steam. Likely one, uh, one less Kiron, one Cursed CL might be worth. And uh, to round up things, we have the ring is mainly against uh, additional thing against uh, restrict, but maybe sided against a bunch of cards uh, or decks where we go more aggressive than them. And we have Jogan and Tribe as our outs to decks going wide. That's m uh, Jogan is mainly for reasoning gate, as it's great either before or after they combo off, unless they OTK us, but if they go like if we didn't play Jogan, they could go first and get a board the turn one and we would have a very hard time but Jogan is a one card out to any of their boards also with spies stalling and fast interaction is going to be slight and necroval is going to be slightly harder to otk us which means if they get some sort of board we can answer that with Jogan uh, or just protect it and not let them make any play also it might be worth to play Jogan against the chaos control deck since they have uh, usually have 9 to 10 cards Jogan is good against and that's most of their comeback cards now it's overlapping with Necro Valley against Sorcerers but that's still a potentially good card for comebacks so um, that's about it for the duck I think it's uh, very well positioned at the moment because it's matching up well with all this uh, I uh, I monster counts. It has answers to most of the cards play popular cards in the format, and it has a very nice uh, defensive shell against aggressive decks. And uh, so, good luck if you want to try it. Uh, good goods, everyone. See you next time. <laughs>